Hello and welcome to the shop. Today I've got a blank given to me by Brian Hartz. Now Brian is a turner in my local club and he makes these blanks and he sells them. I will include a little information down in the comments if you're interested in getting a hold of him and getting one of these blanks for yourself. But what these blanks are, you'll notice the, the metallic reflections. He takes a brass rod, turns it down and gets the curly cues off of it, lays them in a mold and then he puts polyester resin in the mold to make these blanks and he makes them in many different colors. What I'm going to do is make this up to a gold and black Manhattan kit and I think we're going to end up with a pretty amazing looking pin in the end. With this blank, I've decided to go ahead and drill it first, then cut it. I've been having excellent results with that. I've completely eliminated any possibility of chip out, plus I'm able to cut the blank tighter to the tube, saving a larger section of the blank to be able to use on a second pin. The kit I'll be using is the Manhattan. It's gold with black accents and it's from Rockler. This particular kit requires a 27 64 inch drill bit. And because I don't have a depth stop on my drill press, I use a little piece of blue tape and I just line the tube up next to the bit, attach the tape, and when the tape flag hits the top of the blank, I know I've drilled to the proper depth. With the hole drilled in the end of my blank, I brought my tube up and it might be a little tough to see the black marker, but there's a mark right there at the edge of the tube. That's a little better. And that's where we're going to cut the blank. There's the entry hole. There's the exit hole. Perfect. And you can see just how close we get with that method. There's where the end of the drill bit punched into the second half of the blank. We're not going to deal with any chip out on this blank. Well, everybody, I'm over at the lathe and I'm ready to start turning this blank. But I got something new for you guys tonight. I was at the uh, Mid-Ohio Valley Pin Turners Gathering this weekend, and I ran into Timothy Geist of TV Geist Manufacturing Incorporated. And I'm going to put his uh, information in the comments below. He is a, a guy who lives up in West Virginia, at Parkersburg to be exact. And what he does, he's a machinist. He makes bushings just like these. He didn't make this. Well, he may have made this set. I know he makes them for uh, woodcraft, but he made this this uh, dead center and I'm going to pop this into my headstock. I've got my 60 degree live center into the tailstock. I've got these turn between center bushings and tonight I'm going to attempt turning between centers. I know a lot of you have talked to me about this and a lot of people have encouraged me to try this and I just hadn't I just hadn't done it and when I got to the show and I saw Tim there he was one of the vendors and I got a chance to talk to him for a little bit um, this is just something that I decided to try. Now, one other thing that you're going to notice, and it's not going to happen today, this is my um, my um, tool rest. And Tim, I talked to him about making me a four inch tool rest. So it'll be somewhere between three and a half and four inches, which I think will make it a little better for turning between centers. Now, this one's going to work because as you can see, I've got plenty of room to get in there and get around everything. But having a little bit smaller one is going to give me the opportunity to really you know, focus on the blank. I don't need all this extra. And uh, I, I think this is going to work out a lot better. So that'll be coming soon. Uh, I talked with him today on the phone and uh, he's going to be getting that in the mail to me very soon. I mentioned earlier this blank is poly resin. It's really turning out beautiful, but I've noticed that my tool is starting to drag a little bit and I still got probably a quarter of an inch on this, this end and I'm probably down just a little more than an eighth of an inch on this end. So I need to take this down a little farther. So I'm going to run my tool over to my uh, 
grinding wheel and I'm going to just freshen up the edge on it so that I can finish this blank off and I'll be right back. Back from the grinder, I've got a fresh, really nice edge on my tool and I just realized something. I never bothered to zoom in so it's kind of tough for you guys to see what I'm doing uh, when I don't have you zoomed in. Let's adjust a little bit. I think that's going to be a lot better. All right, let me get the shop back on and let's finish turning this blank. I stopped turning because I felt a chip and right here you can kind of see, I don't know how well you can see it, but see how it's got that uh, piece of, um, of brass there? Right in front of it, it chipped out a little bit and then right behind it, it chipped a little bit. Um, I think I'm just right at the bushing, so I think I can still save this blank. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over. I'm gonna grab my skew and I'm going to get my tailstock adjusted, make sure my skew is sharp, and we're gonna come back and work with the skew a little bit because it's gonna give me, it's gonna give me a better edge to uh, work with and I think I can just fine tune and, and clean that up and I think it's gonna be, see, cause I got a piece that's gonna come out right there. But I think if I go to a skew, I'm gonna be in a little better shape. So let's try that. I want to show you guys something. This actually, the blank was this way. The rest of that piece came all the way out, and down at this end, you might have seen it in the video. I got all the way down to the tube, and I'm sitting there thinking, how in the heck did I do that? Because, you know, I I was being extremely careful, and I got to looking at the blank and take a look at this. Look at the amount of material on that side and the amount of material on that side. Same thing over here. Look at the amount of material there. And the amount of material there. This is one of the reasons, let me zoom out a little bit, why I don't drill on this lathe. Let me show you something. I'm going to bring my tailstock in and it looks like it's lining up. See, there we go. We can line it up, but when you lock it down, notice how it's off just a tiny bit. I've got an issue with my tailstock. I need to spend a little time and see if I can adjust that out. It's just so loose and when you lock it down, see, see it's off to toward the back of the frame there. And when I lock it down, it's off toward the front of the frame. It never quite lines up. It's just a hair off. That allowed me to oval this blank out and basically I've lost, well, I'm not going to say I lost this blank. I'll come back and do something with this blank. Well, I don't know if I can since it's oval. Um, we'll think about that. But that's one of the problems I have with this lathe and one of the reasons why I don't drill on this lathe. With the, with the mandrel on here, it runs through the mandrel saver and it kind of helps line everything up and keep it aligned so that I can turn a little truer. I know some of you have mentioned you think my mandrel is bent, but I don't believe it is because when I put it in the headstock and I pull the tailstock out of the way and I just rotate the headstock by hand, the mandrel runs true. I think what you're seeing is the tailstock is cocking it off just a little bit, but I'm still able to turn fairly true. I think this is just um, the nature of the beast with this lathe. Uh, the tailstock is just loose. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop. I'm going to take a little time and see if I can find a way to 
true this tail stock up. You know, maybe there's an adjustment I can make. Maybe there's something I can do. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have to postpone turning between centers until I can replace the lathe. And I really didn't want to do that right away. But I may not have a choice if I can't if I can't get things to line up and be true. So now you can kind of see some of the issues I've been having with this lathe and why I do some of the things I do or don't do some of the things maybe other turners do or I should do. Um, a little disappointed about this blank. I, I don't know. I'm thinking about how I can try to fix this one, but being oval and being so close down there on the tube, I don't know that I can. I do, however, have the second half of that blank, and I think what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to start over. I'm going to get this blank uh, milled up to the proper length, get it drilled out, tubed, you know, rounded over, ready to go, and then I'll come back and I will turn this half of the blank. I would really like to thank you for joining me in the shop tonight for my attempt at turning this poly resin blank with the uh, brass filings in it. You know, it didn't turn out as I expected, but I'm not upset. Things happen. I learned a little bit about my lathe tonight, and as you can see, we've got an issue with the blank being oval. That's a problem. If anyone out there has any ideas how I might be able to adjust the tailstock on a Harbor Freight 10 by 18 lathe to help align it properly and to do away with this, uh, this misalignment issue, I'd like to hear it. Would you leave it in the comments below? Um, I want you to know that this is not the end of this blank. You'll see it again. Well, you may not see this blank again. I'll probably clean it off the tube. But here's the other piece of that blank. I've already drilled it and tubed it. The CA glue has got to dry for a little bit longer, and I'll be ready to uh, clean it up and clean off the edges. And I'll show this to you, the finish pin, in another video uh, in, the, in the coming days. So hang tight, keep an eye out for that. But bear in mind, guys, don't, don't get upset when something happens in the shop. Things like this happen. I know you watch a lot of videos, and turners like me, we, we make these pins from start to finish, and they're gorgeous. Stuff happens. It, it, it's just the nature of the beast. Um, I usually show what happens and try to show you how to fix it. This one I'm not so sure I can do anything with. That's why I'm going to bag it. But uh, when something happens, try to fix it. You've already lost the blank. What have you got to lose? You know, if this, if this would have been perfectly round instead of oval, I would have probably tried to fill that with something or I would have cleaned it off and glued something else to it. You got nothing to lose. Give it a try because you never know what might happen and the blank you may come out with something that looks 10 times cooler than what you started with i'd really like to thank you for joining me in the shop tonight i want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop come back and see me again real soon everybody take care